Hey guys, good morning. We are in uh, the Northeast Cape this morning, just trying to get some different views and different areas of the city for you. Uh, but today I wanted to talk to you about the top neighborhoods to live in in Cape Coral, Florida, if you're considering moving here. We're getting after that next. All right, so as you know, my name's Craig Cunha. I am a realtor here in Southwest Florida, and I'm bringing you all this information for these different uh, topics for the Southwest Florida area to help you make the transition. If there's anything that I can do to help you, first you can go to our nextfloridahome.com, get yourself uh, registered there to do a property search, or go to our Next Florida Home app, which will allow you to do the same thing on your mobile phone. And worst case, if you're not getting the answers you need, you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast. Okay guys, so I wanted to talk this week a little bit about the Cape Coral area, how it's breaking down, what it's like these days. Um, pretty much the houses themselves, and you're gonna see this in some of the shots that I took, that you're, you're getting a similar type of home no matter what area you're going to live in. It's just what do you want near you? What's your lifestyle? What's your commute for work? All those considerations, kids going to school, what's important to you? Do you need to be close to a gym, a hospital, the bridges? Um, in fact, Northeast Cape Coral wasn't even on the top 10 list of places to live in Cape Coral. And funny enough, I go up there to Entrada and Bella Vida, wonderful communities. Entrada is almost brand new, it's just a couple years old. And it's right up US 41 from downtown Fort Myers. So if you're somebody that needs to be at the courthouses or any of those offices downtown, the Northeast Cape might be perfect for you. It's just not considered to be the best area because it's probably the furthest behind in development. Uh, but that's changed so quickly. Uh, new, so many new shops and uh, restaurants and things have come into that area. Um, so it's changed, but we're gonna get into all of that information. Um, there's some areas of the Cape that you're gonna wanna be in if you want walkability, because there's very little walkability in the Cape Coral area. Uh, but if you need to be close to restaurants and things, you know, you're gonna wanna be in the Southeast. Southeast was one of the first developed areas. Lots of golf access. If you want direct access, no bridges, you've almost gotta be in the Southeast. There's just a ton of canals that take you out there. Only problem is the homes age. They're generally older homes. Older homes means higher insurance in most cases. Uh, you can update the home and improve some of those codes, but it could be a challenge for you. But Southeast Cape Coral, uh, the Caloosahatchee area is where all those golf access properties are. Um, JC Park is there. You might have heard they're trying to transition that uh, into a more of an entertainment area. Uh, Mr. Coleman, I know you've been asking about some updates. Last update I saw is that they're pushing through for this JC Park transition. It's gonna include putting in boat docks. They're gonna have to take out the, the pine trees, which is an absolute shame. It's beautiful there when it's a windy day like today. Hopefully we're not picking up too much wind noise, but when it's a breezy day, those trees are just whistling. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's right on the water. Walking paths, there's a playground, there's all kinds of stuff there. Well, they wanna introduce kind of a pavilion setup, almost like what they're doing at the food truck park, where they're gonna have a bar and other things to draw more people in. Not sure if that's a great idea, especially given the food truck park is maybe two miles away at most. Um, so anyway, I'll let you know as that develops further, but Southeast is where we're gonna go to be with all the shops and restaurants. We have a lot of new things coming in there. I was just down at Merrick's yesterday for brunch with Zach and Joey, you know them. Um, I was also over at Rusty's, catching some of the football games, having a few drinks. They, they have cornhole there, they have uh, ax throwing, they have a bunch of things to do down there, and usually live music. Football games, they're all on. Anyway, this whole area is densely uh, connected. There are condos down there that you can buy as well. So if you're somebody that wants walkability, this is the only area for you as far as walkability goes. Condos, and there's gonna be some single family homes up the road, so it depends on how far you can walk. 47th Cove, that new project I told you about the other week, that's in the area. Um, the other area that's just south of there is the Yacht Club area, and that's where the boathouse is. Yeah, you know that's one of my favorite places, right there on the water. But you'll see the Yacht Club itself is still busted up. They still have to make the plans to get that fixed up. The houses down there, again, they're gonna be older. There's some newer stuff put in there. Has a lot of, again, direct access, no bridges. So if you're somebody that's a boater that's looking for a bigger boat and you know bridges are gonna be a problem, Southeast is gonna be one of your main areas to look at. Each of these neighborhoods also is going to have similar homes. That's why when I tell you to drive the neighborhood, see how you like the areas, the home isn't as important because the home is being built right here, this home over here, 
and the one back here that's just being finished. If you like those homes, I can find them in almost any neighborhood because these are the same builders. They're just plotting it or plotting it wherever you're asking for. So if you've already bought a site, you can get one of these put there. If you want it already under construction as an inventory home so you don't have to go through the process yourself, that's gonna be available. If you wanna start from the beginning, pick all your colors and go through all that, that's there as well. Lots of different ways to do it, but keep in mind that this can be done in any one of the quadrants. The quadrants that we're gonna be talking about, you're literally picking for your lifestyle and ease to get to the things that are most important to you. Another one of the neighborhoods that can, that's considered very good is the Trafalgar area. That's kind of where I live. I'm at the west end of Trafalgar. It, it extends all the way over to uh, Santa Barbara. So it covers the whole um, southwest side. And these neighborhoods are all, they're not going to be gated for the most part, but Emerald Cove does fall in there, so does uh, Heatherwood Lakes. McGregor Woods falls in there as well. So there are some things that will be right in this area of Trafalgar, but the schools are very good. There's a middle school and elementary school right there off of 20th and Trafalgar. So if you're looking for a nice, quiet, centrally located subdivision, not gated, then Trafalgar might be for you. After the southeast, then we're gonna go out to the southwest. There are still some shops and restaurants out here. Certain plazas have more of them. Overtime, which is a great place to catch a game with somebody. We've got a Duffy's out there as well, same thing. Decent food, tons of TV screens, lots of games going. And then over in another plaza, we've got 239 Prime, we've got Lobster Lady. So there's a lot of smaller restaurants that are gonna be littered throughout the southwest area. And just in case you're worried about it, Every single quadrant has Publix abundantly. <laughs> All these starting to take over here too for grocery stores. Uh, we have one super Walmart and a bunch of neighborhood Walmarts at this point. Uh, so shopping is gonna be very much like that. And then uh, the Northwest. The Northwest, as I said, is where everything is developing. Everything's coming in there. The Coral Grove Town Center, the Seven Islands. There's some other smaller shops coming in there. The whole burnt store area is, um, offering commercial properties to put more things in. So there's a lot of growth happening out there. And Pine Island Corridor, if you're looking for something that you, somewhere you need to go to eat or to go shopping or something that you don't wanna to go to the south end, this Pine Island Corridor has changed so much. There's plazas all up and down it. Uh, this is where you will find some of the big box stores as well, like a BJ's and a Sam's. We still don't have a Costco here. Uh, but you're going to find a bunch of stuff along this road. You can get your pizza and your wings and a sit-down dinner, bonefish grill, carabas. It's all there. So it's, and I think I mentioned to you, there's a new ABC liquor there on the corner as well. So lots and lots of stuff in this Pine Island Corridor. And if you don't recall, Pine Island Corridor runs from Burnt Store all the way out past Del Prado. It goes into North Fort Myers. So this is covering the Northeast and the Northwest. So you can't go wrong if this is what you're looking for and those are the areas you're considering. In this area, you can get both dry sites and canal sites, but just understand that if you need a certain type of access, there's only so many places you can go, which that would lead us then to the Southwest because the Southwest is also littered with golf access canals. Only problem is you have to get out the lock to get out. So if you haven't dealt with a lock before, a lock basically is going to cut off the flow of water in and out of the canal system. And what that does also is it prohibits too many boats from going through at once. Uh, this particular lock can handle maybe three boats that are 20 to 30 feet. If there's a bigger boat, you're gonna kick out the smaller ones. You gotta wait for them to get through. And then if you have boats on each side of the lock, they do a rotation. This side goes, then that side goes. So if you have a lot of people waiting, it could be a very long process to get through that lock. You need to consider that if you're thinking about being on a Gulf Access Canal and you're going to need to use the lock. That would put us right around the Cape Harbor neighborhood. That's another one of the top neighborhoods, if not the top neighborhood. It's gated, very exclusive, um, tons of waterfront property and a little bit of price. But right across from um, that community is the towers, which is where all the shops are. Um, if, you, if you've heard of Rum Runners, um, that is down in that area. Fathoms is down there. There's a couple little restaurants, uh, Gelato Place, and all this sits right on the marina, so great views. Um, and Rum Runners has a bunch of outdoor dining right there where you can watch the boats. <laughs> Sometimes it's entertaining. Watch them go in and out of that lock and see sometimes what a she show that can be. 
All right, so to also address other neighborhoods, we said Cape Harbor was very exclusive. Another very, very popular one is Sandoval. Sandoval is super popular because of the fact that it is a very diverse family style community, has about 1,500 homes in it. There's a resort style pool with a slide, uh, two different clubhouses, and just tons and tons of activities that are always going on. The play areas, the sport courts, they're all there. If you're, if you're somebody that's big into Halloween, this community has one of the biggest followings for Halloween. The place gets packed like an amusement park. So if that's what you're looking for, if that's your vibe, Sandoval is where you need to go. Then the other communities we're thinking about are maybe over at Royal Tea, Cape Royal has two different names, it's switched over somewhere in there. It's a golfing community. It's more towards the retirement style of life, but golf course is gorgeous. Uh, I've played it, my son goes to the driving range quite often. And it's just on the west side. It is technically not part of uh, the city of Cape Coral, so you don't have city taxes when you live in there. And your water is pulled from the Pine Island water source, not from Cape Coral. Other communities, Emerald Cove is a nice, small, quaint little community that we have here in the area. Heatherwood Lakes, same thing. Not a lot of amenities, have some gates to keep you from, you know, people from coming in and out, but that's really all those are. And then when you jump up into the Northeast, again, you have Entrada and Bella Vida and Coral Lakes. So that's, that's about the most that we have to offer as far as communities go, but they're gonna be littered again throughout each of the quadrants. And we can dissect that if you wanna talk more about gated communities because there's not that much to really sort through. All right, so the next place you're gonna go if you're still looking into golf access is gonna be the Northwest. Northwest is it's developing quickly. And I've had some uh, clients recently say, hey Craig, I, I think I wanna be in the Northwest because I know that area is gonna blow up. Well, yeah, it's gonna blow up because it's the only area left with enough space to really blow up. The Northeast still does have some space, but Northwest, for some reason, is always carrying that a little bit more desirability. Uh, we do have a, the direct road, Burnt Store uh, Road, right up into Punta Gorda, but Northeast Cape has US 41 up into Punta Gorda. So either one, if you're looking to go north and get up into that smaller town, um, lots to do up there too, waterfront dining, lots of little shops that you wouldn't see down uh, here in Cape Coral or over in Fort Myers. So it's the small town vibe there. Um, anyway, we've done videos on Punta Gorda. We'll probably talk about it again sometime soon. However, that area is tr developing quickly. The Seven Islands project, project is going out there whenever they start that. The Coral Grove Town Center is going out that way as well. It's considered Southwest, but it's just because it's a couple streets away from where the break is to get to the Northwest. It's all in the same area. And that burn store road has been expanded to handle more traffic. So you're not going to find as much uh, trouble commuting around that area. Um, and then the Northeast, we started talking about the Northeast. There's a lot of stuff that has come in here recently. Crumble cookies, I know I've put them in the videos before because my son absolutely loves them. Mission Barbecue's there, if you haven't had it, it's amazing. But those two things anchor um, the plaza down there and you'll see there's a Mattress King or one of those mattress places down there, uh, a tire place down there. So you can get some um, auto services taken care of across the street is the Lowe's. Kitty Corner is one of the hospitals, or at least the urgent care, and uh, Applebee's and, uh, or excuse me, Outback and Chili's. And just down from that is the only Chick-fil-A in Cape Coral. Yes, there's only one Chick-fil-A. If you know you need to be close to a Chick-fil-A, you've got to be in the Northeast. And no, safety is not a concern here in Cape Coral. Are there crimes? Absolutely. We're the second safest city in the entire state with any city of over 100,000 in population. We're over 200,000, so a little bit bigger than the, than the minimum number on that. However, crime is not a big thing for us here, so don't think that each of these quadrants has a different crime rating because they're all gonna be very similar. The more densely popula populated areas will probably have a little worse crime rating because there's more people. More people, more crime. That's just what it is, right? All right guys, so that is a little bit more about the different neighborhoods that you uh, will have options to live in if you come into the Cape Coral area. Some of what you can expect to see and find when you're in the area. And once again, if you have any questions about what you saw here or if you want more information, check out one of these other videos. If you've got specific questions you need an answer to, you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast.